Hello and welcome to episode 8 of the LUFC Fan Zone podcast. I'm Sam Isles. And I'm Jack Ellis. In each episode, we'll be talking to an ex Legion United player or manager about their time at the club. We're delighted to announce that today's episode is sponsored by Luxury Watch Brand and the official timing partner of Leeds United, Louis Irard. The company was founded in 1931 in Switzerland and they have been an official partner with Leeds United for the last four years. As this season is Leeds United's centenary year, Louis Irard have created a limited edition watch to celebrate 100 years of Leeds United. This celebratory watch is limited to just 100 pieces with every piece made precisely by hand. The watch uses the same automatic chronograph found in brands such as Tagore and Breitling and their limited centenary piece has a special dial made using fragments of the brick from the player's tunnel at Ellen Road, allowing you to add a very unique piece of Leeds United history on your wrist. The watch is available on the official Leeds United website and the online club shop as well as on Louis Irard's Instagram page at Louis Irard Official and their website www.louisirard.com along with the rest of their luxury watches. But back to the show, and this week's vote was extremely tight, with the poll split 51-49% to 49% between a guest who played in the highest of the high for Leeds United, and someone who played for the club during their darkest period in our 100 year history. All of our episodes can be found on our LUFC Fan Zone YouTube channel, as well as on Spotify and Apple Podcast. In last episode, we were with former defender Matthew Kilgallen, who spoke to us about being at Leeds from the age of 12, being a part of Leeds' Premier League relegation side in 2003, and why he didn't vote for his former manager, Dennis Wise, when he was in the jungle on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. This week, we're joined by someone who played for Leeds during arguably the worst times of the club's 100-year history, and joined Leeds just four months before relegation to League One in 2007, a league which Leeds would be playing in for the first time. He went on to make over 100 appearances for Leeds, including a playoff final at Wembley Stadium against Doncaster Rovers in 2008, and keeping a clean sheet at Old Trafford in 2010, when Leeds famously beat Manchester United in the FA Cup. Franchard, Bale is arriving to his left, 4 to aim for, deflected cross, really good stop by Ankergren, now that for me is a better save than anything he produced at White Hart Lane, wonderful instinct. That's right, this week we're joined by former goalkeeper Kasper Ankergren, thank you so much for joining us Kasper. No problem at all. So we're obviously planning to speak to you about your time at Leeds, which was now over 10 years ago. But last week, as you might know, Leeds were crowned champions of the Championship and are returning to the Premier League after 16 years. Do you still follow Leeds at all or keep out for the results? No, of course I did. And <clears throat> um, you, you always try and keep an eye on uh, on your, your previous clubs, on, on their results and how they're getting on. And, and I obviously got the friends still living in Leeds uh, who were big, uh, especially one guy that, who's a massive Leeds fan. Um so yeah, of course I'm I'm keeping an eye on Leeds. I don't think that there's not many players left uh, since my time there. Uh, Staff-wise, I think there might be only one or two left. Uh, but it is it is crazy to think about that. It's already ten years ago. And because of Leeds' promotion, you'll be returning to Ellen Road next season as well, because you're currently the goalkeeper coach at Brighton. How are you finding your role there, and are you excited to go back to Ellen Road next season? Yeah, of course. I, <clears throat> I think it's um, Leeds is a club that uh, which well, already the time when I was there, we were talking about that the club is too big to be in League One. They should be they should be in the Premier League, and I, and of course I understood that you could see with the following and the size of the club. Um, so I think uh, I'm really really pleased for Leeds for the, for the Leeds fans that they are they are back in the Premier League and. Um, yeah, really looking forward to going back to Ellen Road, and uh, it'll be a tough game up there. Uh, it must be, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a sellout every game they're playing at home. It's going to be, it's going to be great to have Leeds back in in the Premier League. Like Jack said, it'll be great if we could speak to you about your time at Leeds. And you joined the club in 2007 from Danish side Bromby, which was initially on loan for the remainder of the 2006-2007 season. But how did you find out about Leeds' interest and what did you know about the club before you joined? Well, I was actually, um, I was away with, uh, in Denmark because you got the, you got a break every um, every winter. The the domestic national team, so they call it like the, like the B national team. They always travel away with the best players playing within, within Denmark. Uh, they travel every, every winter. Uh, so we always, they, they, We've been uh, to Jamaica. We've been to 
Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so you, you tend to, you know, we've been to Shanghai. They, they tend to go ab- abroad to places to give players uh, like kind of a different experience, playing against different players, uh, conditions, everything. Um, so at the time I knew I, was, I wanted to leave Brenby and uh, while I was away, um, my agent phoned me up and said uh, that Leeds wanted to take me on loan. And uh, I thought it was a great, great opportunity. So as soon as I um, I came back, I landed in Copenhagen. I had one, like just the evening, and then uh, we were flying to Manchester the next day to, to go to Leeds. And uh, But unfortunately, I, I caught a buck on the way coming back from, we, we landed in Chicago. And from Chicago to Copenhagen, people were being ill on the plane. I could hear they were being sick. But I was feeling all right, so I thought, oh, I got away with this one. But um, when we landed in Copenhagen in the evening, I felt terrible. And uh, yeah, I spent most of the time from Copenhagen to Manchester just being sick in the toilet. So I didn't actually train with the team for the first three or four days because I was I was ill. And um, the first game was, was Norwich away, and uh, I only trained Friday before the game. Uh, and, and that was it, really. Uh, but I didn't play the Norwich game, but we lost 2-1, I remember that. And then after yeah. that, I, I got into the team. When you joined Leeds, the club was on a downward spiral because they'd just been relegated from the Premier League a couple of seasons before you arrived. And there were a lot of off-the-field financial problems. And when you joined Leeds, the club were in the relegation zone in the Championship. Did them problems, both on and off the pitch, ever put you off the move? No, not at all. No, I um, I'd been at Brent before about seven years at the time. Uh, I thought they messed me about a little bit at the end, even though I still had, I think I had about three years left on my contract. So I was, I was, I wanted to go. That way, it, it was time for me to move on. Um, and I was just pleased that Leeds wanted to take me and 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 give me a chance. And uh, I know it's, it sounds like a cliche, but I, f- I fell in love with English football from from day one, from my first game. You know, the, the crowd was was just just to get a corner, to you got crowd on on the on the on the feed. You know, and it just it seemed right for me. I, I enjoyed it from I loved it from day one. Uh, and you know, I, I think I was positively surprised by. The city, the fans, uh, I, I'm quite, a, I like to go out in nature as well, uh, you know, go for a walk and, you know, th- the nature up there is just, it's beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah, I really, I, I loved it from day one, to be honest with you. When you did arrive at Ellen Road, Dennis Wise was Leeds' manager and he was someone who split opinions between the Leeds fans. And last episode on the podcast, we spoke to Matthew Kilgallen, who left Leeds in the same month that you arrived. Yeah. And he said that he he didn't really like Wise's aggressive managerial style, but at the time, because he was so young, he didn't want to speak up about it because he didn't want to get kicked out of the team. How did you find Dennis Wise as a manager, especially during your first couple of months at the club? And did you feel the same way as Kilgallen, that maybe on some occasions he might have been a bit too aggressive with some of the players? No, there's there's no doubt that Wise, he is, he is that type of guy where... Uh, you either love him or hate him, I think. And um, <clears throat> he was he was good to me. So I, I can I know where Kilgallen is coming from when he's saying that. I can see that. Uh, but I think uh, again, Dennis will uh, if if you perform for him and if you do well, he'll be great with you. But I've also had managers where I think they're too aggressive and that sometimes if you're not producing, if you're not playing well, he will come for you. And 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 some people don't like that. Most people don't like it. And I I can I can I can see exactly where he's coming from. But uh he was always good with me, and I think I I did all right for him. I think uh, so he and I was only on loan, so he didn't really didn't really have to come for me too too much, if you know what I mean. But yeah, I, I know what he means when he said when he's saying that, but I, I can't I can't say anything negative about Dennis Wise. I, I know he he was um, he could be quite hard. He knew what he wanted, and if people weren't performing, he would uh, he would come after them. And like you said, your your first match for Leeds was that away trip to Norwich. 
where you were second choice to Neil Sullivan and started on the bench. However, just one week later, you ended up making your Leeds debut in a 2-1 win over Crystal Palace at Ellen Road. What can you remember yeah. about that game? I actually remember the game quite uh, quite clearly. Uh, I remember they had a had a big chance early on in the game with in a one v one situation where where I saved it. Uh, I made a couple of saves second half, and um, I even remember the goal they scored as well quite clearly, which was a header low to my left. Um, but it was just great to to get off to a winning start. Really, that was really really important to me. Uh, it was important to the team as well. Um, so no, I, I loved it. I must admit, yeah, I loved it. It wasn't the prettiest game. We didn't play pretty football. It was not about playing entertaining football. It was about winning at the time because of the situation we were in. Uh, and yeah, we won. And from then on, you ended up becoming a key member of Leeds' starting eleven, replacing Neil Sullivan, who had been Leeds' number one for the first half of that season. When you first joined the club, did you expect to become Leeds' first choice goalkeeper? Or did you find that quite surprising that you took over the first choice so quickly? No, I, well, it's it, you can't always just expect to go in and play. You need to sometimes earn your place. Um, but, you know, I didn't think too much about it. I just I thought, like, if they want to take me on loan, there must be a reason behind it. And I'm just going to do my, my best in training and, and then uh, the manager hopefully will pick me. Um, but it probably happened a little bit quicker than expected. Uh, I must admit, uh, Sullivan was a, he was great with me. Um, really good guy. I've spoke to him and seen him since uh, that. Both when he was playing at Doncaster, because we ended up playing uh, playing Doncaster with Leeds. Uh, uh, sorry, with Brighton when I moved afterwards. When I moved to Brighton, so I saw him there, um, and then I met him over the years. Uh, he's now now the goalie coach, isn't he? So. But great guy. He was really, really good with me. Um, so, yeah, I might, maybe I was a little bit surprised that he would put me in after the Norwich game. Um, but, um, yeah, well, like the manager picks the team and I was just happy to to be in the starting eleven. Yeah. So you went on to feature 14 of the remaining 16 matches that season and missing a couple of weeks to injury. And in March, when Leeds were desperately needing points for survival, Leeds bet Luton Town 1-0 at Ellen Road. And in that match, you saved a penalty, which was your second penalty save in your first five matches. And many fans felt that it was not just a turning point in the game, but it was also a turning point for Leeds' season. And you ended up picking 11 points out of the next available 15, with just a few matches left of the season. Did you feel that save against Luton kick-started some sort of momentum? And how confident were you that Leeds would stay in the Championship that season? Well, I remember every time somebody was talking about... For me... Failure wasn't uh, wasn't an option at the time. Like I, I wouldn't hear any talks about being relegated. I could not see us getting relegated. Um, uh, I was very positive, to be honest with you. Um, and we did we did in that season. I don't remember losing at home. We might have drawn a few, uh, but uh, we we were really really good at home. Away we struggled. Uh, only picking up a few points away from home. That was our biggest problem. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I thought we were going to get out of it, to be honest with you. Um, well, it wasn't meant to be, but um, but the Luton result was obviously a massive result because they were down at the bottom with us. And um, yeah, I remember the penalty save very well. Remember the penalty save, the other one you were talking about, that was away, away to Cardiff. Mm. But we lost the game anyway, if, I think one or two nil. Um, but our home form was was quite good actually in them last in them fourteen games that I, well in the last yeah the games that I played, uh, yeah I missed out on a, a two games I was injured away to Birmingham I remember that, uh, Graham Stack played and and did all right so the manager chose to to keep him in goal for the the Sheffield Wednesday game, but which we lost I think we lost four one at home. And then I was back in playing again. Despite them good results, Leeds played Ipswich Town at Ellen Road in the penultimate game of the season, knowing that the side had to win the match to have any chance of survival. Leeds were on course to the win thanks to an opener from Richard Quesrell. However, Ipswich equalised with just minutes of the match remaining, which prompted a mass pitch invasion with fans running onto the pitch from the cop end. 
what can you remember about that match and the pitch invasion, which stopped the match for almost half an hour? Well, I remember they scored. A, a goal was disallowed as well in the game. Um, and I actually remember a Leeds fan running on, running on the pitch at the time, being a little bit aggressive. But I think we that was disallowed anyway. Uh, yeah, then I just remember, I remember them scoring. Uh, I think it might have been a header. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, it was a little bit surreal to be honest with you, and uh, it's not something that you that you want to see. If you know, like when you're on the pitch, you you want to be safe, and you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes when fans run on the pitch, you know, um, it it was it was a strange situation. It was not it's not a nice day. Um, don't remember much from the game as such, to be honest with you. Uh, besides the fans running on the pitch at the end, um, but obviously I can see, I, I can understand that they shouldn't be in the pitch. Uh, that that's for sure. But they were frustrated. The club's gone through a really difficult time. Uh, everything's a little bit all over the shop, you know. With the fans were not happy with Dennis Wise and Gus Poye because they obviously they they got the Chelsea. They've been at Chelsea and all that, and with the chairman as well. So there was a lot of frustrations, and and um, it's a it's it's uncomfortable as a player being on the pitch with with fans running on because you're not sure what's going to come or what's going to happen. Despite the long delay, after the fans had been cleared from the pitch, you and the rest of the players returned to play the final five minutes. However, the Ipswich manager said after the match that his players wanted the game to be abandoned because they felt that the situation was unsafe. How surreal was it being in the dressing room for such a long period of time, not knowing if the match was going to be resumed with the possibility that the referee might have to call off the match? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't remember much um, from the dressing room. Um, it, it's just one of them things. Uh, it, it shouldn't really happen, uh, but it happens quite often, doesn't it? And and I think at the time you just want to go in and, and play the last five minutes and see if you can nick a win, really. Um, but it, it's, I remember just, I remember being on the pitch with the fans on it, which is not, uh, it's not a great experience. It's not what you want to see, really. Uh, but then again, I can understand where the fans are coming from with the frustrations. Uh, I remember clearly after we got, relegated it was it was not it was not nice it was not it's 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 probably the worst experience in my career and i've only been at leeds for what three four months uh but you know you hear about people getting sacked and it, it's 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 horrible really it's, it's not nice and like you said leeds were relegated that game as the result stayed 1-1 which effectively relegated them to League One for the first time in the club's history. How did that feel? No, as I, as I said, it's 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 a horrible feeling. Um, it, it's horrible for because it affects so many people's lives. W one thing is the fans, but, you know, the people that work for the club, the people that might get laid off, um, it, 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 it's, it's horrible. Like, you feel like you let people down... Uh, fans down um it's it's a it's a really strange strange situation um uh, you know there's a lot of blame going on people are blaming each other the players uh there's a lot of finger pointing um it, it's not a nice situation uh, and and one i don't want anybody really to experience and and obviously the bigger the clubs you play at the worse it it will almost feel, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And when Leeds' relegation was confirmed, the club received a 10-point deduction because of some off-the-field financial problems. Did that come as a surprise to you at all and the rest of the side? Or was it quite clear at the time that the club was seriously suffering off the pitch? Um, I'm not sure I was aware of how bad a state the club was in at the time. No, it probably did come as a surprise. Um uh, and then even furthermore to get the 15 the minus 15 points for for the league one that that was probably a, a bigger surprise to me 
because one thing is getting it when you're already relegated to minus 10 um that that's one thing but to actually uh then get the minus 15 when you start the next season that was a, that was a big blow but yeah like you just mentioned about the minus 15 points how hard was it to concentrate playing for Leeds and representing the club when there were so many off-field problems you know to do with the fans and the owners and everything how was that how did that affect you on the pitch like so so I obviously I went back to Denmark because I was only on loan um and uh I was I was desperate to to leave uh but Leeds had with all the problems going on financially and that uh they were trying to like they weren't sure whether they could pay the fee and it was not even a, a big fee that 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 Brunby wanted to they that they wanted for me so but I I remember quite clearly I was going uh, we we're going pre-season somewhere with with Brunby uh I went up to the like the sports director and said uh, listen I've never caused any problems this club I've been here for seven years I, I want to leave and and but they wanted to try and ship me off to uh, to Norway there was a club up in Norway that would pay more money and I, I just made it quite clear to him I said listen um, and it was it was done in a nice way there was no no shouting or anything I just said listen that I'm not going to go to Norway I want to go back and play in England I want to go back to Leeds so if it makes if if I have to wait another transfer window that's what I'm going to do so I'm not going to Norway. So you can sell me to Leeds now, or I'll just sit and wait. And uh, and I said, uh, ideally, I don't want to go anywhere pre-season, just in case something comes up. And he said, no, no, you're going, uh, you're going tomorrow. I said, okay, no problem. And uh, next day we were supposed to go away. I came down in the dressing room and there was no bag. And uh, I went to the kitman and said, listen, there's no bag for me. I need a bag for for traveling. And he just said, "No, you're not going." Uh, and that's when I kind of knew that the club has has realized that um, they probably that's that's when I knew that they were probably going to sell me, and they were agreed to the terms, and and everything would be all right. So that was uh, that was a good day to be uh, yeah, really really pleased. And then I ended up signing just a year, uh, sorry, a week before uh, before the season started in in League One. Uh, but then to take you back to to what you were asking uh, and what you were saying, um, I think Dennis Wise and Gus uh, they they were very good at just trying to uh, to make sure it was it was us players against the world, uh, if you know what I mean. So it wasn't even that difficult. I think it was just a good atmosphere. Uh, they've done a good job in preseason. They've not been paid the players at the time. Uh, so I think they just galvanized everything. Was just it was just us players against uh, against the world, which was um, was quite nice in a way. Uh, we didn't f- try and focus on the problems the club had financially and and all that. Uh, just focus on in games. During that off season, when Leeds had been relegated, the side sold virtually the entirety of the first team squad because of the financial troubles. And Leeds played some preseason matches against York and. Geisley with a full 11 of just trialist players because of the situation that we're in and just one week before the first League One match at Tramere Rovers Leeds had just seven first team registered players at the club how confident were you that Leeds would have been able to play that match at Tramere and not only that but had a competitive side good enough to compete in League One yeah, see, again, I didn't really focus on all that. Um, I was just pleased to be back at Leeds, to be honest with you. Uh, I thought the players we had at the time, we had a decent enough team to 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 do well in League One. Uh, you know, you had Tressa Kandal up front together with Jermaine Beckford, which them two would always score goals. Uh, we had the centre-backs who were, who were decent enough. So I thought there was a nice spine. You had Jonathan Douglas in midfield. Um, there was a nice spine in, in the team. So I, I wasn't worried, to be honest with you. And because of the lack of players, Leeds signed 10 players in the space of 24 hours, just three days before that trip to Tramia. 
including yourself, which was reported to be the only transfer that window, which included a fee, allowing Leeds to have a full squad and allowing to travel to Merseyside with full 11 and a full bench. What can you remember about the preparation for that match and how hard was it because of the sudden increase of new players who might not have known each other as well as they should have before the match? Um, <clears throat> what do I remember? I don't remember much. I think uh, I think it was rooming with Tori Andre Flo for some reason. Would he have been sat? Yeah, he would, he would have been there. Yeah, yeah. He, he would have been there. Um, but I don't. I do remember we we did sign a few on loan or or maybe even free transfers. But still, I thought we had a, a good enough team to to do all right. Um uh, it didn't it didn't worry me for some reason. I might have been living in a bubble. Um so no we, I wasn't worried for some reason. I I'm trying to think about the, the, the lineup at Tranmere. Can anybody give me the lineup? Yeah, yeah of course. Can so would the um like uh did Rui did Rui play? Yeah, Marquez played. I think he played with Fraser Richardson or Matt Heath at the back, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it might have been Matt Heath. And left back, would that uh, have been Ben? Richardson, Marquise, Heath, Lewis, Weston and Thompson, Westlake, Hughes, Beckford, uh, Tracer Candle, Can- and Johnny Housen, and Tor Andre Flo came on as substitutes. Yeah, but there you go. It, it's not a bad team for a League One standard, is it? No. Yeah. I think that that was why. But obviously, I knew Fraser as well enough, and good player. You know, he, he was always going to give you a hundred percent. And the the centre backs were were decent, just defending centre backs. You know, they would put the neck on the line, and and Alan Thompson in midfield. Uh, yeah, we had we had a decent team. So no, I wasn't worried. To be honest with you, no, I wasn't. Um, yeah. I was quite confident going into that game and. But I do remember going one nil down at Tranmere. Uh, Danny's wife going mental in the dressing room at half time, and uh, I don't remember. I don't remember the equaliser. I remember the winning goal really late in the game. I remember that quite cre- quite uh, quite clearly, uh, and that was obviously the perfect start for us. Which just uh, and from then on we just went on and on to win games. I can't remember how many games we won in a row, but I remember quite clearly we just uh, got rid of the minus 15 points, which was a good start. Like you said, despite the huge amount of negative problems off the pitch before the season, Leeds won away at Tranmere, as well as the next four matches against Southend, Nottingham Forest, Luton and Hartlepool, meaning that the side had picked up 15 points in the first five matches, which wiped out the points deduction and saw the side reach zero points. What can yeah. you remember about that run? And did you expect to start the season so well, given everything that had happened? Yes, yeah, as, as I said before, I think it was, uh, they were quite clever, Dennis and, and, and Goss, about the way they did it, you know. It was just us against the world. So uh, we didn't let anything affect us, which around us with, with all the negativity and, and everything. And I, I remember the, the Nottingham Forest game quite clearly. Uh, I remember the Hartlepool. That's in a game where I probably made one of the best saves I made in my life. Yeah, that's a question uh, at the end, actually, from someone. <laughs> it's, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the Luton game, really. I remember the the South End game at home. That was the one after Tranmere, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because we yeah. scored really late. It was one one, and I thought, oh, what's a shame. No, we started so well, uh, picked up three points away from home, and now we. Uh, we're not going to get all three points, but then we did get the. We scored. I don't know how we scored three goals. It must have been in the last five six minutes. It's, I can't tell you for sure, but it it feels like it was really really late in the game that we that we won it. Uh, so it was just a perfect start for us, really. Uh, exactly what we needed. And in Leeds' first eighteen matches that season, you kept ten clean sheets, which saw Leeds climb up to fourth in the table despite starting on minus fifteen points. During that time, how would the morale in the side change from the start of the season? As obviously the side was playing well, and by that time had the points deduction behind you. Yeah, as I said, like I think the morale was was always good. You know, the thing is, what you need to remember is uh, the players that were at Leeds at the time. 
they were there because they wanted to be there. You didn't have any passengers that was like, oh, no, I want to move, I want to leave. Or There was no real negativity because the players that were there, they wanted to be there and play for Leeds United. So uh, morale was, for me, always good. I didn't go on pre-season with them because my con- I was still contracted to, to Brenby at the time. But, uh, so I can't. I can't uh, talk about that too much. Um, but again, that was players that wasn't getting paid. They probably could have left if they wanted to, but they wanted to play for Leeds United. So uh, for me, morale was always good. You know, uh, it, we had a great time. And when you're winning games, it obviously makes it easier. Uh, it was just a, it was a really, really good time. For me in my career, I, I really enjoyed it. And because of your fantastic performances between the sticks... You ended up winning League One's Player of the Month for October, which is especially rewarding for a goalkeeper as it's usually given out to the strikers who are putting them in the back of the net instead of goalkeepers who are keeping them out. How did it feel to receive that award? Yeah, that, that was obviously a highlight of, of my career. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, as you say, it's not, it's not often that the, that the keepers are getting maybe the praise. You know, it's always the goal scorers. Or... So it was just, it was brilliant, yeah. Really... Uh, it was nice to get the to to win something but I, what i remember quite clearly as well on we played at home and if i remember rightly it was Leiden orient we were playing that was the game i received my my award and i actually didn't have a good game so um that was one where they i pulled a, a ball out of the net that was definitely crossed the line but the linesman didn't see it i had actually quite a bad game <laughs> that day so uh, it's a little bit mixed emotions when I'm talking about it receiving the award and um, and the game yeah well you and Leeds continued in fine form and in that January the side was just outside the automatic promotion places however towards the end of the month manager at the time Dennis Wise quit the side to join Newcastle United as an executive director did that come as a surprise to you at all and the other players yeah no we and, and don't forget we lost Gus Poy as well to Tottenham before that, yeah, uh, which was a big blow, and then losing Dennis Wise as well, uh, who I actually think you could probably, you could probably. It's more a question for you guys. What, do you think the fans did they, they actually turned and actually they they uh, what's the word for it? Like uh, because it, when I was there to begin with, the fans didn't like Dennis Wise and Gus Poy, but it seemed like they they turned them around. Is that, is that right? Did the fans? Take yeah. to uh, take th- to them. I think when Wise first joined, all the Leeds fans were a bit skeptical because they thought him and Ken Bates obviously had the Chelsea connection, so they were like the little the Chelsea boys running the club, and obviously they were Leeds as rivals. But as Leeds started picking up points and doing well, I did think he turned quite a few of the people's perceptions on him and changed their opinions on him definitely. Yeah, see that 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 was the feeling as well that I had at the end. So yeah, for me it was a big blow. Uh, suddenly you're losing your your assistant manager, who was really really well liked. He was a perfect link between between Dennis and the players. Uh, and then why is he leaving? Uh, yeah, it was a bit. Uh, it was a shame. It, it it really was. I remember going into a South End game. We played Luton away. Uh, it might have been a one-one draw. I got injured in the game. Got a dead leg. Uh, on the Tuesday we were playing South End, and suddenly we were out of manager. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, it. Wasn't great, uh, to be honest with you. Leeds legend Gary McAllister was Wise's replacement, and he was appointed just days after his departure. How did his managerial style differ from Wise's? Um, they were very different. Uh, I would say Wise was more direct. Uh, uh, he wanted to work out from a, a sp- like more like a strong defensive base, uh, whereas uh, McAllister he wanted to play football uh, a little bit more, but didn't really try and implement it too much at the time for me. Uh, it was more next season. I remember them saying that everything had to be playing out from the back. Um, but yeah. Um, that that that's probably the biggest difference. Why is he a bit more direct? Where Gary McAllister wanted to play football, and 
even though Leeds did have a change of manager, the form was still quite good. And although Leeds slipped out of the playoff places, the side was still had a good chance of finishing in the top six that season. And he was still obviously a very vital part of that squad. However, in March, Leeds travelled to Swindon Town and following the match, it was reported that you had been involved in an altercation with some of the Swindon fans. Can you remember what happened? Yeah, yeah, I remember quite clearly, yeah. Um, The Swindon fan, more or less, uh, I think it was second half, has just bombarded me with coins and lighters and and everything. Um, I was quite happy with the coins, to be fair. I just used to pick them up and and so a little bit of change for me. (laughs) <laughs> um, but um, at the end of the game, I think we won the game maybe 1-0. I uh, went to get my water bottle and a lighter flew just past my head. Uh, I lost it a little bit, took the lighter, just lobbed it back into the crowd. And uh, that's when, um, when um, after the game, yeah, I, I, was, I was told that, the, that somebody reported it to the... I don't know whether it's the police or the FA or whatever you whatever you call it. And uh, it came a little bit as a shock to me, to be honest with you. Uh, but I remember I had to go down to London to go to a hearing. And um, Swindon had problems with the CCTV, so it wasn't it wasn't working properly. So they couldn't they didn't really have any real footage of me picking up the lighter and and lobbing it back into the crowd so uh i ended up just getting a fine which was uh which was good and i think it was it was fair you know um so for me it was uh it was all right i i, I took the fine and uh i learned from it after that you returned to the starting 11 and a strong into the season saw leeds finish in fifth place in the league just six points behind second place, Nottingham Forest, meaning that if Leeds hadn't had started the campaign on minus 15 points, the side would have been promoted <clears> back to the Championship automatically after just one season. How frustrating was that? Because obviously the players on the pitch had performed extremely well. However, it was ruined by the off the problem, off the field problems to start the season. No, that was, um, I remember, I can't remember, I, in my head, I think it was Yeovil. When we beat Yeovil away, uh, that would have been a game we would have got promoted. I'm not sure it was Yeovil away, but that, that's how I remember it. I remember going back on the bus and thinking, no, if um, if we haven't had the minus 15, we would have got promoted today. And that was obviously... Um, <clears throat> it, it was just... You, you sit there and you think about how nice that would have been, been. You would have gone straight up. and But... Yeah, it was disappointing in 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 many ways, you know. Uh, but to still make the playoffs that year, what a great result that was! Actually, when you think about it. So Leeds had to settle for the playoffs, and overcoming Carlisle United in the semi-finals, Leeds travelled to Wembley to face Doncaster Rovers in the final. What was the preparation for that match, and was it any different to any league matches you previously played throughout the season? Yeah, it was it was different <clears throat> in many ways. Uh, I remember a couple of days before we traveled down to London. I uh, can't remember the hotel we were staying at, but uh, no, we traveled down. Uh, we trained at Watford's training ground, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it was it was different, you know. Whereas normally you just travel down one day before. Yeah. So uh, yeah, different in in, in many ways. Uh, and then uh, I remember we we're going into Wembley just to see the see the stadium maybe the day before um it was different in many ways and also the just the size of the game you know it, it was it was it was different and um just just a shame we we didn't turn up in that game really for me i i, I don't i don't think we we played well and we probably didn't deserve to get anything out of the game like you mentioned leeds unfortunately went on to lose a match 1-0 which resulted in another season in league 1 However, what did it feel like to play at Wembley in front of so many Leeds fans? I remember quite quite clearly uh, walking on the pitch. I was a little bit emotional and just uh, I remember you walking on and you get the big flames coming up on the side. You, I could feel the heat from them. Uh, yeah, it was quite emotional for me to, to uh, you know, when you line up and you shake hands and all that. Um, 
it was a, it was an incredible feeling and and uh, in a, in many ways playing at Wembley was a was a great experience except for losing uh and uh, it was a, it was a big blow losing that game i was uh it was it was tough afterwards uh you know a few tears for sure um yeah it was it was a, it was just very disappointing for me like I was really, really, I was gutted, really disappointed after the game. Despite coming so close to promotion that season, in the after-season awards, you picked up the Best Contribution to the Community Award, which was rewarded for your off-field actions that season, and you were the first ever player to win the award. How did that feel? Oh, it was brilliant, yeah, I remember that. Uh, no, it was just It was just nice, you know, I've, I've always believed in that you need to to and if you can to do whatever you can you know it, it's only half an hour an hour of, of your time to to go and maybe affect somebody uh, affect their life or you know just help out or do whatever you can in the in the community i think it's really really important so no i was really proud to 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 win that um and yeah no i remember that quite clearly yeah um it was it was nice you know if you can just do something for somebody for half an hour, an hour of, of your time, it, it's nothing, is it? And if you could help them in, in any way or affect them, uh, why, why wouldn't you do it? After the playoff defeat, Leeds prepared for their second season in League One. However, after less than three months into the season, the club sacked Gary McAllister and replaced him with Simon Grayson, who helped the side push towards the top of the table once again. Grayson appointment saw Leeds finish fourth in League One finishing in the playoff places for the second successive season. But did you feel that Leeds should have been targeting automatic promotion that season? That was obviously the aim when we uh, when we started the season. Something changed a little bit uh, uh, for me with McAllister and, and uh, Steve Staunton. I thought they were quite aggressive. They were quite negative. Um, I don't think he got us playing the way he wanted wanted to play, really. Um, and the results wasn't great, you know. I was in and out of the team constantly, which is it's never a good sign if you see a team where they change the keep all the time. So it it means that um, they don't really know what they're looking for, or what they want, or, or the keepers are not performing to the standards. And and I didn't I didn't perform that that uh, on the on the Gary in that. In that in in that um, in the beginning of the season, it was um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's, it it could be a little bit of hangovers from the season before, where you've been so close, and you know it's disappointment. It's it's really really tough to then go again. And yeah, no, it was it was uh, it was not a great season for me overall, uh, and for the team. You know, we we had a good enough team to to gone to get the automatic promotion. But we as a team and, and me, uh, we didn't perform the way we should have done. Uh, and, well, yeah, we ended up, uh, well, Gary McAllister got sacked. Simon Grayson came in. He was a breath of fresh air, I thought, to be fair at the time. Um, but still ended up losing to Millwall in, in the playoffs. Yeah, like, like you said, Finishing fourth meant that Leeds faced Millwall in the playoff semi-finals and after drawing 1-1 at Ellen Road in the second leg following a 1-0 defeat at the Den, Leeds suffered playoff defeat for the second season in a row. How hard was that to take? Well, that was another blow, wasn't it? Maybe not as bad as losing at, uh, at Wembley the year before, but again, it's another one where you have to pick yourself up. Um, yeah, a big disappointment. Like As I said, as, as a team, if you look at the starting eleven, the team was was too good not to get promoted. Really, uh, so a big disappointment again. Um, but again, it's something that you you try and learn from. You know, at least we we had the disappointment a year before, uh, and and you will have big blows and disappointments uh, uh, when you play football. But yeah, it, it was it was another big disappointment. It seems like Leeds are not made for the playoffs, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, another big blow. Uh, 
but you know you do you try and stay positive and you try and get going again try and and wind down relax and then uh, then go again the result condemned leads to their third season in league one and at the third time of asking how desperate were you and the players to finally gain promotion back into the championship yeah it, it was so important wasn't it again it was a it's a bit of a mad mad season uh, for me personally as well where i was a little bit in and out of the team um uh but but what, what's a what's a crazy season now I remember we were like i was on the bench when in the last game of the season when we played bristol and going one nil down having a man send off and then uh i thought that's it uh, back to playoffs again and and as i said before we don't with leads the oh, i think with leads in general there's not there's not many happy memories from playoffs so really didn't want to go into the playoffs again and then winning it it was it was just it was mad uh crazy but it was just a big relief really to to uh, to get promoted i think for everybody yeah and tracking back a little bit to the start of that season uh grayson continued as manager and the side had their best start to the season since the 1973 campaign under don revy winning 17 out of their first 23 matches of the season and losing just once, putting Leeds comf- comfortably at the top of League One in January. What do yeah. you think was the reasoning for Leeds' amazing start to that season? Um, <clears throat> some of the players that you that you have in that team, uh, like a Johnny Housen, he uh, he was obviously a, li- a little bit older now, uh, more experienced. You got the they signed a Robert Snodgrass. He came under Gary McAllister, who we really start seeing what he could do. Uh, but if you look at the team, it was it was a, it was a, it was a championship side. So um, it was just a, a, a really good team. There was a nice nice feel around the team. Uh, at times, played some good football. Um, it was it was just a good side. I thought. Uh, and and as you said, we were we were doing well up until January, and then uh, for some reason, we start struggling. Leeds were flying in the league at the time, and in the third round of the FA Cup, we were drawn against Manchester United at Old Trafford after overcoming Kettering in town in a replay. And Leeds would be visiting Old Trafford for the first time since their relegation from the Premier League in two thousand and four. What can you remember about the build up to that match? And once again, was it any different? To a build-up to a normal league match, it wasn't that different. Um, I remember I was struggling with my shoulder at the time. I didn't really train the day before the game. I had to go and get an injection in my shoulder, uh, so couldn't really train the day before. Uh, remember traveling on the coach up to the up to Manchester, and uh, I had a phone call from a from a Danish uh, journalist who said if I was looking forward to the game. And to be honest with you, my, I had a in my head. I knew we were playing. We were a League One team, but on paper, well, we were a League One team. But on paper, we probably had a better squad than a than a League One club. Uh, but we were playing Manchester United at Old Trafford, and I thought it's it's going to be one of them games where it could be an incredible experience. But on the other hand, if you go and get done by five then it's not an enjoyable situation and it's not an, a good experience. So I, my feelings were very, like they were torn. I was thinking, oh, if we if we get pumped here, I won't enjoy it. So so I couldn't really answer the journalist. I just remember saying to him, well, we have to wait and see. I'll, I'll, I'll answer you after the game, whether it's it's a good, uh, good experience uh, or, or not. And obviously it turned out to be a, a, a great experience. Prior to the official team announcement, myself and many other Leeds fans might have thought that Manchester United might have played a slightly weaker team because of their Premier League priorities and being obviously two leagues above Leeds. However, their attack consisted of both Wayne Rooney and Dimitar Berbatov, who at the time were arguably two of the best strikers in the country. How did you find playing against them too? As they were, like I said, they were some of the best players in England, and you had to be at your very best to keep a clean sheet because you made some fantastic saves. 
Yeah, I, I remember um, I actually didn't sleep well uh, the day before. I kept waking up and, and thinking about the game. Um, normally, uh, on the, in the dressing room, I would go through what, what, the, what team they're putting out. Uh, you know, sometimes if there's a player in the team, I, I like to know everything about uh, the opposition. So if the strikers are the right-footed, left-footed, how big are they? Um, and then you get to know players over the years. But uh, with Manchester United, I remember looking at the lineup and I thought, no, I don't need to check anything. Because I knew all the players already. I knew what they were good at. I knew what they could do. Um, so, but as soon as you go out on the pitch, you go and warm up, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game. You need to approach it like it's a game like any other game. You can't start thinking about the size of the game and who you're playing against too much. You know, you just need to be prepared, be focused on what you need to do. And um, so, yeah, I didn't have to check too much on on, on what they were good at because I, I knew. And and obviously, they put out a, a really strong side at the time. Um, and and what a great uh, what a great experience and. For the for the fans as well, I thought it was it was just I, I I'm not sure I knew at the time how big and how important this was for for the fans until afterwards. Yeah, and obviously as we all know, Leeds came out as one 0 winners thanks to a winner from Jermaine Beckford, which not only saw Leeds win at Old Trafford for the first time in 29 years, but the result was the first time Manchester United had lost to a side outside the Premier League in the FA Cup with Sir Alex Ferguson as manager and the first time Leeds had kept a clean sheet at Old Trafford since 1995. Did you have time to celebrate or did you have to focus straight back on the league? No, it, it's, it's, that is obviously one of, the, one of the times where you need to enjoy it. And, you know, you, you, you're gonna, you have to enjoy it because in football, you go through some tough spells and, but a, a situation and a game like this, you have to enjoy it. Uh, and you need to try and suck it all in as much as possible because it's it's something that will stick with me forever. Um, and I know we didn't win anything at the time, if you know what I mean. It's not like we won the league or we won something special, but to beat Manchester United at Old Trafford is something that uh, will stick with me forever. And, and it's, it's, it's a really, really special occasion. And um, yeah, we just, I uh, remember... I had some friends over from Denmark that went to the game and we went back, went back to Leeds. We went out, we had a few beers. And uh, then after the day after, that's obviously when you need to start refocusing and, and focus on what, what's ahead. And at the end of the day, the league was the most important. The Man United game was just a bonus. And although Leeds did extremely well in the FA Cup, the league results in the second half of the season saw Leeds slip off top of League One. After a 3 0 loss against Swindon Town in January, the side also slipped into second in the table for the first time since September. And the 13 matches following that Swindon game, Leeds won just three matches and picked up 14 points out of a possible 39, seeing the side fall out of the automatic promotion places and into fourth. What do you think was the reasoning for Leeds' dramatic turn in form compared to the first half of the season? Well, I don't think the FA Cup did us any favours. Uh, the, the Tottenham game especially like it will always take a bit of the focus away from from um, from what what we should really uh, be be focusing on so i remember we played tottenham away drew two each and then on the tuesday we stayed down uh, and then we were playing swindon i remember that game quite clearly we lost three nil uh, we could have got done by even more uh, so that that was a worrying sign if you know what i mean then we had then we got had Tottenham at home. Uh, then again, you start focusing a little bit about that. But also, don't forget how many games we played that season. If you look at the because we were competing in the, obviously in League One, where you already got loads of games. You got the FA Cup where we did well. Plus, we had Kettering that we had to play twice. Then we suddenly had to play Tottenham twice. Then there was the other the other cup. Is it the, what was it called at the time? Johnston's Paint, yeah. yeah. Yeah, where we got quite far as well. And you know, all the games, they, they add up and um, it's suddenly you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. So if you look at how many games we ended up playing that year, 
could it, I think we could have played close to 60 games. I might be wrong, but that's the that's the figure yeah, I got in my head. There's a lot of games, yeah, like you said, loads. Yeah. Um, and plus, we would have played in the in the other cup as well. I don't remember really how well we did in the league. In the league. league cup. Yeah. I don't remember anything from that. But obviously, we would have had at least one or two games in that as well. So it, it just all adds up. And um, I, I remember, but it was, we struggled. We, we really did struggle. Uh, and it was, uh, it's not nice, you know, when you're in that situation, you know, you, you look around to, to find somebody who can, uh, who can do something special or who can help out in, in a situation like that. You need leaders, you need winners in the team. Uh, but at the time, we, we struggled. Yeah, we got knocked out by Liverpool in the League Cup as well in September. Oh yeah, we lost one nil. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shane Hicks played that game. That's right. Yeah. Leeds face Bristol Rovers on the final day of the season, knowing that our win would see the side return to the Championship. However, Simon Grayson chose Shane Higgs to play in goal after his return from injury, and despite you playing the majority of that season, did you find it frustrating at all? As I'm sure it would have been a game that you really wanted to play in. No, he took me out of the team about... I probably would have missed the last six games. I remember I was at fault for the goal against uh, at home to Millwall, a game that we lost. That's when Shane just got back from injury and he put him straight back in. But I knew, I knew that uh, Sam, Sam and Grayson didn't really fancy me. And I've, uh, I had conversations about him during that year. Um, but that, that was him. You know, football is, is a game about uh, its opinions. Uh, I knew that he didn't really rate me as a keeper. Uh, but you could see he took on, we had a couple of keepers on loan from we had one alone for David Martin alone from Liverpool and um but and and so I in that year I remember just playing through injuries I didn't want to give him any excuse to take me out of the team but uh obviously when I when I messed up against Millwall I knew uh that he was going to put Shane back in but we struggled anyway you know like we I remember we got absolutely pumped away to Gillingham if I remember correctly uh, we really, really struggled. Uh, so, of course, yeah, I wanted to play against Bristol. But, um, but again, for me, the most important was that Leeds United got promoted. So I didn't, obviously didn't, I never really done that in my whole career. I never caused any any problems. Or, uh, for me, the team is the most important. And, and uh, for me, it was just important that we, that we could uh, get promoted. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Leeds ended up going 1-0 down in the first half. However, goals from Johnny Howson and Jermaine Beckford secured the win, which saw Leeds finished in second place and promoted automatically back into the championship. How did that feel at the time? Yeah, it's it's very surreal. It's 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 a lot of emotions. Um it's difficult to explain unless you really but as a fan if you're a big fan and, and, and you were there, then then you would kind of understand it. But it's just a lot of things, a lot of thoughts going through your head and, and just uh, very emotional. Uh, but uh, what what's a great day. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that day. But despite the celebrations, just one week later, and despite you playing more than half of that season and featuring over 100 league matches in the previous three seasons, your contract at the club had come to an end and surprisingly Leeds chose not to extend your deal, which meant that you would be leaving the club. How did that make you feel? And did it come as a surprise to you that the club didn't extend your contract? No, no, it didn't come as a surprise. I already, uh, I kind of knew, um, you know, when, when, when your agent goes in and asks, uh, what, what was the plan with Casper next season? And, and they say, yeah, we, at the time they were saying, yeah, we want to keep him but nothing came of it, then I knew uh, that it wasn't going to happen. So I already prepared to move, I think. I, I was ready. Um, so it was not, It didn't come as a surprise at all. I got a phone call from Simon Grayson. I think it was in Italy at the time, um, just saying that uh, 
thanks for everything you've done for the club. Um, but I won't, I wouldn't be offered a new, a new deal. So it didn't come as a surprise at all. And how did that make you feel? Would, would you have wanted to spend a bit more time at Leeds, especially as they'd just been promoted back to the championship? Yeah, of, of course. Yeah. No, I was happy. I was settled in Leeds. Uh, but that's football, you know, like, um, you know, you, you're gonna, you, you have to, uh, try and stay positive and, and sometimes things happen for a reason. And, um, it was, it was okay with me. It, it, it was, uh, that, that's, that's just football for you. So no, I, I was, uh, I was just looking at the different options and, 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 uh, I was okay with it, even though I, I loved my time at Leeds and, and living in Leeds, uh, yeah, but that that's football. Following your release from Leeds, you went on to join Brighton, who at the time were in League One, and you're still at the club now as a coach 10 years later after spending your first seven years there as a player. But since your departure from Leeds, have you had the chance to visit Ellen Road since, or will next season be the first time when Brighton travelled to Leeds in the Premier League? No, I've obviously been up uh, back up to Ellen Road Uh when we played the uh, when we played Leeds, I played Leeds a few times. Uh, I think it was on the bench up at Ellen Road when we when we played them. I actually think we won. Uh, I think we actually won that game. Um, so I've been back to, to Ellen Road a few times. We we gone back as well as a family. Gone back up when uh, there was like an international break. So I've been back to Leeds uh, quite a few times. This second section of the show is sponsored by the Harrogate CBD Company. Harrogate CBD Company are a local business run by Leeds United fans and they're on a mission to help people sleep better and relax. They source the finest CBD products so you don't need to look any further when struggling for anxiety relief or a helping hand when struggling to sleep. Research has shown that CBD can help refresh your mindset and increase your focus to reduce anxiety and their oils contain pure hemp, organic ingredients and less than 0.2% THC content. If you want to find out more about their products, visit them on www.hgcbd.co.uk or on Instagram at Harrogate underscore CBD and add the discount code LUFC to receive 5% off all less sprays and oils. They've also begun shipping their products worldwide as well as the UK and now offer delivery to 72 different countries. So go and check them out. In this section... Our followers get to ask their questions to our guests by commenting on our LUFC Fan Zone Instagram post. Each episode, we select four questions which are commented and put them forward to our guest. Our first question comes from Kevin, who asks... Hi, Casper. Uh, my question to you relates to a game against Hartlepool uh, about 15 years ago. My God, we used to actually be in the same division as Hartlepool. Um, but it's about a, a save that you made um, on that particular occasion. Uh, an absolutely, truly world-class save. Probably the best save I've ever seen at Ellen Road. Uh, wondered uh, what you could remember about it. No, I remember it quite clearly. And I've, I've tried to find it. I, I think I managed to find it. Uh, it's out okay. there somewhere. Yeah. Um, we've, we've got a clip if you want us, if you want us to send it to you. <laughs> yeah, please do that. Yeah, that would be great. That would be brilliant. <laughs> Um, no, I remember it quite clearly. Like, uh, I actually, I remember the day before. See, this is what fans don't know sometimes. You know, when, when you look at, at your team and at your players, uh, you expect them just to go and perform game after game. But sometimes things, they might have, players might have nickels. They might have little injuries that the fans don't know about that they're playing with. They could have problems at home. Um, I had the, uh, I remember this quite clearly. I had to move from, because at the time I didn't have a house or a flat or anything. So I, I had to move the, the day before the game. I had to move from one flat, from like a hotel apartment to a different one. And uh, I remember just moving the day before I got to bed really late and, and for the game of, I thought, Oh no, I don't feel like I'm on it here. This, do you know when you just, I didn't feel right. But uh, and then it's that's that's the weird thing about football. Uh, I I end up making one of the best saves I've ever made in my whole career. Uh, 
I do remember it quite clearly, like the, the free kick uh, and a header. And somehow, I don't know, I think I might have touched the ball. It's high to my left. Somehow touched the ball onto the crossbar and then trapping the ball on the line for some reason. Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it, it was, uh, yeah, that's probably, that is for me the best save I've made in, in my career, I think. And our second question comes from Adam, who asks, During your time at Leeds, who was the funniest player and what was the best prank they pulled? Well, there's been some characters over the time. There's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, let me have a think. Robert Snodgrass was always up to something. Uh, <laughs> quite often phoning up, pretending to be somebody else. I think he did it once. He called me out once where he phoned up and pretending to be a journalist i don't know he can he can change his voice quite well and he can put on accents and so he was always missing about the uh, it's naughty uh let me have a think um blakey what's his name what's his first name blake uh R- robbie Rob- blake robbie blake yeah. yeah yeah he was uh he was he was a good guy funny always up for a laugh um but on when he when he crossed the line he was absolutely mental. him and uh Alan Thompson. Uh they uh yeah they were they were that was old school in training and in games. Like if you weren't doing well or oh, they were always moaning in training. But outside the pitch they were great, great guys, great characters, got on with them really well. Um but I would probably say Snotgrass was the one that was always uh, looking for looking for something and what what's a great guy like always uh, always seems always in a good mood outside the pitch again he's the same guy when you cross the line then uh, then it gets serious but uh, i would probably say snuddy is the one that's always trying to to mess about always phoning up people um and and just uh, somehow changing his voice putting on accents and uh, he could catch out any any anybody next up is Zach, who asks, In the five games at the start of our League One season, which saw Leeds win all five and return to zero points, which match was your favourite and why? Um, it's a difficult question, but I have to say Tranmere because it was so important to, to get off to a winning start. Uh, it was important for everybody, for the fans, the players, just to get that uh, get the three points straight away. Uh I think uh, the Forest game has to be up there as well, just because uh, it's a it's a big club. It was a difficult away game, uh, and to to pick up points away from home, all three points was was so vital to us. Uh, so that will be in there as well. But I'll probably, I'll, if I have to pick and choose, I'll, I will go Tranmere just because it was so important to get off to a winning uh, winning start. And lastly, Will, who asks... Hi, Casper. My question is, what was your favourite moment at Leeds United? Again, it's it's really difficult uh, to pick out one moment, but I, I'm going to pick out two. Um, I've, I've had some great experiences. Like the Obviously, getting promoted was the most important of everything. Get Leeds United out of uh, League One. And for me to leave Leeds, haven't been a. I know I didn't play the last game or the last six games, but just to leave Leeds United and 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 leave them getting promoted into the championship was really really important to me. Uh, but then again, then you got the Man United game. I know at the end of the day, it's a it's a one off game where you just the only thing you actually want is you got into the next round of the FA Cup. But for the fans, the, the size of it, it was just really important. Uh, but don't forget the Tottenham games were great experiences as well. Um, great penalty save. Yeah. Great penalty yeah. save. Um, so that's obviously really, really important. But I would, if I have to pick and choose, I will pick uh, getting promoted and beating Man United. And that ends today's episode. Thank you to everyone for sending in their questions and thank you so much for your time, Casper. No problem at all, guys. We'll be back in two weeks with our next guest, but who will you choose? 
Stay tuned for the upcoming vote on our LDFC Fan Zone Instagram story later this week. Thanks for listening.